If you have your Bibles today, I invite you this afternoon to join me in the gospel as recorded by Matthew. Matthew chapter 16. Praise God. Amen. I hope you all forgive me, but I think I'm going to have to take my jacket off. I'm getting awful warm up here today. probably tell. I know Tommy can. I've kind of sweat through my... <laughs> Amen. It gets warm up here in front of these lights and stuff that we have to use so you folks can get a good clear picture at home. Matthew, the 16th chapter... I'd like us to read verses 13 through 20. It's not a very long passage. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20, as always, I read from the King James text. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. If you bow your heads with me another moment, Master, Savior, Redeemer, God of all ages, Creator of the universe, we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful presence and power of God that we feel in the house of God today. The Spirit of the Lord is present to heal those that will reach out by faith and touch the hem of your garment. The presence of the Lord is here, Lord, for those who will reach out and grab hold of their deliverance, grab hold of their victory, grab hold of their blessing, grab hold of their miracle. Whatever we need, O oh God, you are present today to provide. Whatever the doctors have said, whatever the judges have said, whatever our attorneys have told us, we know, God, we have not heard the final word until our Lord has spoken. Master, move by the Holy Ghost in this message today. Loose, I pray, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, not only upon me as the speaker, but also upon every soul that would watch and listen to this message. Let revelation flow like a river. For even as Peter could not possibly have made this declaration, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, without revelation from heaven. Even so, we today cannot know the answer to this question 
except it be revealed unto us from our God. Reveal yourself in a powerful way today, O Lord, for we ask it in none other than Jesus' saving name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Praise the Lord. Who wants to be a millionaire? Often informally referred to simply as millionaire was an American television game show. The show featured a quiz competition with contestants trying to win a top prize of one million dollars by answering a series of multiple choice questions, usually of increasingly difficulty. The original U.S. version premiered on ABC Network on August 16, 1999, hosted by Regis Philburn, who you see pictured in my sermon illustration today. For decades, Regis Philburn woke families up with his morning talk show live. Later on, he'd be back in America's homes at night as the host of who wants to be a millionaire? Regis Philbin is credited with coining the famous phrase, Is that your final answer? And today, as my sermon title, I am borrowing that phrase, Is that your final answer? The Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples a question a simple question he asked them to explain to him just who it is that they heard others speaking of him as being he said who do men say that I the son of man am his reference to Son of Man is a way of highlighting his humanity. So he was literally saying, who do people think, who do people say that I, the man, Jesus Christ, am? Of the twelve apostles, there was one who tended to be rather quick to the draw. His name was Peter. And Peter suddenly cried out, and excuse me, they answered his question by declaring to him, Will some say that you are John the Baptist, who by now had already been beheaded and was buried? And some Elias and others, Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. He then said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Well, now, just like Regis would offer his contestants a number of answers, and they could pick one, the Lord said, All right, you've listed what men say you've listed what people think isn't it funny how people could sooner believe that jesus the man was one of the greatest prophets of ancient times brought back from the dead and yet they could not believe that jesus rose from the dead They thought that Elias or Elijah could have risen from the dead. They thought that uh, Jeremiah could have been risen and revived and brought back into this world by reason of the virgin birth. But somehow that's the best they could do. They could see him as a great man. Jeremiah and Elias and John the Baptist were three great prophets held in very, very high esteem, thought very highly of. And they answered the Lord and said, Lord, 
people are saying that you're one of these three or possibly even yet another but then the Lord asks them the second question a little bit harder but who do you say that I am now they could pick from the list if they had a mind to do so but Peter as I began to say a moment ago quick often to answer quick to jump in and offer his thoughts Peter leaped into the conversation making the declaration thou art the Christ the son of the living God my friend I want you to understand something there is a world of difference in the mind of a Jew between the term son of man and son of God when the Lord asked the question he said who do you say that I am his initial question was who do men say that I the son of man he is pointing specifically to his natural human state said who do people say that I as a man am but Peter's answer stepped up a notch he said thou art the Christ you're the promised one you're the Messiah that God has promised from antiquity through the very prophets that many believe you to be today hallelujah oh but he didn't stop there glory he said thou art the Christ but then he went on further he said the son of the living God hallelujah I want you to know there was not a Jew on this planet who believed that Jehovah God had some divine offspring and some second person of the Holy Trinity sitting beside him in heaven no when a Jew made the declaration thou art the son of the living God they were declaring you are a man born of God without earthly father hallelujah and God does not produce offspring therefore when God appears as a man himself we the Jewish people call him the son of of God the Jewish people their religion was so stringent and so strict they were never to refer to a man as God now God wrote the rules the Lord made the rules so he's not going to be offended if they keep the rules he understood that they would call him in his human manifestation, in his human form. He understood that they would call him the Son of God. If you look back at the story of his arrival on planet Earth in Luke 1, 25 through 35, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, 
for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Listen, he shall be great. Listen, and shall be called the Son of the Highest and shall be called the Son of the Highest. He didn't say, and he is the Son of the Highest. It's not what it says. It says, he shall be called the Son of the Highest. Because why? Because he is going to be born. He's going to be conceived by the Holy Ghost in your womb. He will have no earthly father. God alone is his father. Therefore, he shall be called the son of the highest. Listen. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this thing be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Do you see the language the angel used? Didn't say, oh, you're going to give birth to the Son of God. As if the Son existed eternally prior to this event. No. Said this child is going to be conceived of the Holy Ghost. This child will have no earthly father but God. And therefore, those who believe this believe what? Believe that he is a man born of God. Therefore, he is God in human form. Those who believe that will call him what? The Son of God or the Son of the Highest. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23, Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, notice how... The angels in both instances refer to the fact that they're of the house of David. Why? Because that was integral to the prophetic order. He had to be born of the house of David. He had to be born into a lineage that traced back to David because God said in the Old Testament that of the fruit of David's body would he God sit in David's throne therefore this child had to be born to earthly parents whose lineage went back to David we know from the language used in Luke 1 that Mary was from the house of David now we hear uh, the angel referring to Joseph as also being a son of David or of the lineage of David. He said, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her 
is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. My word, once again, the angel told Mary what name was to be used. The angels now telling Joseph what name is to be used out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? He could have just told Mary and not bothered with Joseph. But he made sure both of them knew what that child's name was to be. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The very name Jesus translates Jehovah as Savior. Jehovah is Savior, or simply Jehovah Savior. He said his name shall be called Jesus. Why? Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. Anybody understands the meaning of the name Jesus understands that tagging on for he shall save his people from their sins is building on the definition of the name Jesus. Jehovah has come so that he might save his people from their sins. That's why the name Jesus is to be used. Oh, but listen, the angel wasn't done. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Oh, there was no confusion. There was no misunderstanding. Jehovah had become Savior. Hallelujah. God alone fathered this child. And for this reason, this child had to have a unique composition. The spirit within this child was nothing less than the spirit of Almighty God Himself. When the Lord brought me into the one God message and brought me into this glorious truth, I told you how He told me to lay my Bible on its spine and let it open and it fell open. And the first verse that I read was this verse, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel. If Jesus is a separate person, the angel told Mary that he was going to sit on David's throne forever. Isn't that what he said? If he's a separate person from God, then God is a liar and he's not the king of Israel. And he's not going to sit in David's throne as he promised in the book of Psalms. But thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, meaning Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. I turned a page or looked down further and I read, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee, from that time and have declared it, ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Flip the page and I read, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Then I looked further down the page, and I read, Tell ye, and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? 
who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. Listen, children. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, Jehovah's Savior. Why? For he shall save his people from their sin. And Jehovah has declared, I am a just God and a Savior. And there is none beside me. He Oh my God, have mercy. He said, honey, I'm not going to send anybody to save. I'm going to come to save. Hallelujah! In Hosea chapter 13 and 4 I read, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is, listen, for there is, oh hallelujah, I want to shout a while. For there is no Savior beside me. Oh hallelujah, Jehovah God declares, there is no Savior beside me. The Son did not sit beside the Father to be sent from heaven to become the Savior. No, he said there is no Savior beside me. If there's any salvation to be done, I'll do it. If there's any saving to be done, I'll provide it. That's why Joseph you're going to call his name Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus in Greek. For he shall save his people from their sins. Both Mary and Joseph were advised by the agents of glory that the child to be born of Mary would be called the Son of God. And yet, prophecy never refers to God's having a son. Or that Messiah would be some eternally existing person heretofore never referred to or spoken of by the Almighty. In Isaiah 9 and 6, I quote this often, the prophecy declares for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. Jesus only wore the title son of anything because he was born a male unto us. That's why he's referred to as son at all. But he is son of man in that he was human. He was son of God in that he had no earthly father but God. The apostles, Peter, must have heard the stories somewhere in the course of the Lord's public ministry. I imagine that Peter and the others had opportunity to sit down and meet with Mary and Joseph. And I'm sure at some point Mary had the opportunity to tell her story and tell them what had happened to her. And Joseph then was able to do what the Word of God declares out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? He was able to say, and I can confirm this. Because I too was visited by an angel while I slept. And the angel told me the same thing right down to the name that I was to call that baby. Somewhere in hearing those tales, somewhere in hearing those stories, Peter's heart grabbed hold and realized this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. This is the promised one. But there's 
more. Hallelujah. He's not a man who was born to be the Christ. He's not simply a man who was born to be the Messiah. No. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Oh, children, I want to tell you today, the disciples of Christ were offered a multitude of answers. They could choose one, but Peter said, No, Lord, none of those that we've offered you, none of the opinions of men quite match up to your true identity. But I'll tell you who I see. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God, have mercy. I'll tell you, Jesus. When I look into your eyes, as the Apostle Paul would later say, I look into the face of the glory of God. I see the glory of God in your face. Revelation chapter 1 verses 10 through 18 the Apostle John writes I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last Oh, wait a minute, Isaiah 44 and 6. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, the King of Israel, even his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Suddenly John hears a voice saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, listen, one like unto the Son of Man. What did Jesus ask His disciples? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So once again, He is appearing in human form. He appears as a man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. For those that have any question as to who John was looking at, we now read the answer. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. <laughs> Once again, he uses the phrase that Jehovah God used over and over again in the Old Testament, describing himself. He said, I am the first, I am the last. Oh, but listen, for those of you that want to get this confused, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, hallelujah, amen, and have the keys of hell 
and death. I'm here to tell you today, child of God, that John was looking once again at the glorified, deified Christ. Hallelujah. He no longer appeared as that young man who walked the land of Israel in the first century or at the beginning of what would become the first century. But now he stood before John in all the regalia of his holiness and divinity, pure to a fault, even so much that his hair was white. Oh, hallelujah. I used to know some United Pentecostal missionaries, young people, they were on their way to go to Papua New Guinea. And he said to me, I wonder how I'm going to look with white hair. And I said, why in the world would you wonder what you're going to look like with white hair? He said the strangest thing. He said, every missionary that we have ever sent to New Guinea, within a matter of weeks, their hair turned white. I said, really? Well, that's unusual. He said, what's even further unusual is that the tribes and the rural people, the very distant people far removed from civilization, he said, they revere and respect men with white hair. He said, and our missionaries everywhere they've gone they have been given free access and they have been given the ability to do whatever they wanted to do and say whatever they wanted to say simply because their hair was white it's because of the beliefs of the local people but white symbolizes purity there is nothing to pollute it, nothing to dilute it, no pigmentation, no color, no nothing. It is pure. We often picture God, as it were, as a man with white hair, don't we? But the Lord said in Revelation 1, I am the first and I am the last. I'm he that was dead and is alive, hallelujah, and alive forevermore. Glory to God. Oh, I want you to know we're talking about Jesus. Jehovah become our Savior. In Revelation 21, 3 through 7. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Listen. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he, not they, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We've heard the Lord Jehovah make this declaration. And we've heard Jesus make this declaration. They both can't be separate people occupying the same position. You can't have two firsts and two lasts, can you? 
And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. O oh, children, turn your hearing aid up. And I will be his God. And he and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. That's Jesus talking. I shall be his God. Oh my God. And he shall be my son. Oh glory to God. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Glory to God. Nowhere in the prophecy does it say that the Messiah was going to be the eternal Son of God. No. He was God. Hallelujah. Manifest as a man and called the Son of God. Isaiah 41 and 4, I remind you, who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, I the Lord, Jehovah, the first and with the last, I am He. In the original, I want to point this out, in the original Hebrew, the word with does not appear in that text. There is no a uh, Hebrew word that is translated with in the King James text. So really, this should simply read, I, the Lord, the first and the last. Why they tagged in with, I'll never know. I am He. I am He, He said in Isaiah 41 verse 4. Then read down two verses, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. My Lord Jesus, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. In John chapter 18, almost done today. John chapter 18, verses 3 through 6. Judas, who betrayed the Lord. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them whom seek ye? They answered him Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them listen I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Verse 6. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You want evidence of the divinity of Christ. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. In Isaiah 44 and 6, the Lord, the King of Israel and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Isaiah 41, verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am He. And when Jesus spoke those words, the night they came 
to gather him up to arrest him. All those who had come to arrest him literally could not stand on their feet. Hallelujah! That was a powerful declaration that he made. Just as he spoke before the scribes and Pharisees and made the declaration before Abraham was, I am. There was no greater blasphemy that Jesus the man could have committed than to use that phrase that Jehovah God used on Mount Sinai when identifying himself to Moses. Who shall I tell them has sent me? Tell them that I am hath sent you. I am that I am. Hallelujah. And Jesus before the scribes and Pharisees declares before Abraham was, he didn't say I was. He said before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. They knew exactly what he was saying. Oh my God, have mercy, children. Isaiah 48, verse 12, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am He. I am the first, and I am the last. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I am the first and I am the last. And I remind you again, Revelation 1, i got to read it to you again. Verse 17 through 18, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and I am the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Oh, Peter, who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're Elijah. Others say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist or one of the other prophets. But who do you say that I am? Oh, Lord, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I've heard Mary share her story. I heard Joseph confirm her story. And I believe it. I believe you were conceived in her womb by the Holy Ghost. I believe you have no father but God. I believe that Joseph is your stepdaddy, not your real daddy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, do you believe that, Peter? Is that your final answer? Saint of God today. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. I, I'm going to add two scriptures real quickly. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost you remember what the Lord said to Peter he said this hasn't been revealed to you by flesh and blood he said the only thing that could show you this is my the spirit of almighty God Philippians 2 verses 5 through 11 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, not the form of the Son of God, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, was not made, made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. This is why we call him son. Made in likeness of men. 
and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven that's angels and cherubim and seraphim and things in earth that's every man, every woman, every boy, every girl and things under the earth that's every devil, every demon, every unclean spirit hallelujah and that Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father simply meaning therefore in so doing glorifying God the Father oh children who do you say that he is today can you declare with Peter? I know I can. Hallelujah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, I believe it. Hallelujah, I believe it. I preach it. I've been preaching it now. Oh, hallelujah, for a lot of years. I hadn't quit. I don't plan on starting. Because I know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. The fullness of the Godhead, Paul said, dwelleth in him bodily. Hallelujah. Oh, who do you say that I am? What's your answer today? And if like me, you're able to declare thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, then I have this last question for you today. Is that your final answer? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I've, I found my answer over 30 something years ago and I've been preaching this I'm going to tell you some folks Trinitarian churches preach Jesus the second man on a three man totem pole even in the LGBT community they grow a whole lot faster and a whole lot easier than we do preaching this message but I'm not going to compromise the truth if all I get to preach to till the day I die is the camera lens I'm not trying to build some legacy to myself. I'm not trying to build a kingdom unto myself. I'm not trying to establish an income either. God's called me to preach the truth, and I'm going to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And I'm here to tell you today, when you know the whole truth, you'll answer the Lord's question. Who do you say that I am? The same way Peter did. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when the Lord then asks you, is that your final answer? You'll answer, Lord, that's my final answer. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord.